Hello and welcome. You're watching Lessons in Financial Literacy and today we'll be talking about a fairly interesting investment option, art. Investing in art is on the threshold of becoming a sunrise industry for art dealers. While investment is a heady decision and buying a painting is a choice of the heart, it's not quite clear as of now if an art lover for the sake of art would want to resell for a higher price. Until about 10 years ago, the investment was unheard of. In principle, art now has all the makings of a great investment, glamorous with long-term appreciation. And to help us know more about the art of buying art, we have with us two very special guests. Malika Advani, Art Advisor, joins us. And we've also got Dinesh Bazirani, CEO of Safran Art. Thank you very much for joining us today on the Thank show. Thank you for having us. Just to get started uh, with a very basic question, how does art as an investment compare with other investment tools like equity, bonds, stocks, real estate? Simply define art as an investment for me. You know, I don't think you can make a direct comparison between these different assets. I mean, art has its own kind of features and is, you know, peculiar in its own way. But I think, you know, if you have looked at art with, with the lens of looking, finding good paintings, understanding the nature of art, understanding the quality of works, understanding the provenance of the work, then over the long term, art does give good returns, as long as you've gone in with the right reasons and not only for financial reasons. So, I mean, I mean, in general, I think people look, at, some people look at art as an investment, some people look at art as collectors, but the right way to go is to first look at it as a collector. The investment aspect comes a little later. If you made the right choices in the beginning, I think in the long term, it does give good returns. Hey, Malika, that brings me to the next question. Do you have two sorts of people, people who buy art for the love of art, others who buy it from an investment angle. What are your thoughts on this? I know Dinesh has already said that you've got to buy it from a collector's angle, but what are your thoughts on the whole for love versus investment? Um, the difference between art as an investment and the love of it, I think again, they go hand in hand, as Dinesh rightly says. If you are willing to put in that time, I think you'll learn over a period of time what it is that you like, what it is that you want to go out and see, and then eventually have on your wall. If you are willing to hang it on your wall, irrespective of what the value is going to be, I think that's when you are a lover of art and paintings. And I think you should be willing to accept that unlike a stock, where it's, um, you can classify it slightly more um, it's easily, it's easier to do that, art is not as tangible, either in terms of figuring out your returns or in terms of what you're going to get out of it. You're not going to figure out whether you're going to get 10% or 20%. Nobody can predict that. I mean, you'd have to be oh, Octopole or whatever the yeah. octopus's name is. Yeah. Because nobody... Paul, 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 the Paul, Paul, Paul the octopus. <laughs> because there's no formula, yeah. right? So I think you, when you buy a painting, you first buy it because you love it. You've responded to it aesthetically. You have some sort of a response to it, a sensory response to it, an emotional response to it. And that's why you want to own it. Don't go out and buy a name just because somebody else tells you to. Yeah. You know, I think if you don't go through the normal steps of the nature of the product, mm. you know, you will definitely go wrong. You know, I think you need to understand, like Malika said, you first need to get that base of knowledge to understand, you know, what comprises yeah. the art world. What are the what? I mean, how do you define a good painting versus a not, you know, a, uh, an average painting? What are the inherent characteristics that make a painting good. And I think you either learn it yourself or you find some really good advisors. But if you don't understand it, I think you will go wrong. What are the factors that you keep in mind? You said don't go after a big name just because it's a name, I right? What are the other things? How would you also say timeline of holding it, uh, know the art? I don't know. I mean, I what are the it's factors? it's a complementary relationship. First, you have to go out and figure out for yourself what you like and don't like. Whether you're right or wrong, frankly, is immaterial. You just have to be able to form an opinion, right? Then, by all means, take the advice of a good gallerist, take the advice of an auction house, a, an advisor, a, deal, a private dealer, a consultant. You're, you have lots of tools and lots of people within the art world who can help you professionally to make some of those judgments. But you must also have and form some of your own judgments that can go hand in hand with your professional advisors, right? Once you do that and you tell me, listen, these are the five artists I like, how should I go about it? I can then tell you, listen, this is how they have, I can give you the background. Okay. This is how they have worked. This, for example, Jogin Chaudhary doesn't work. His primary medium is not canvas.